I want to bring up Portugal's 2000 decriminalization of drugs because I think that this is going to provide a, a very strong lesson to other countries around the world. And it's also an further evidence as to why this whole treating people who are using drugs as criminals is just a immoral and it's just a complete failure. As many of you guys probably know by now, Portugal actually decriminalized drugs back in 2000. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe they were the first country to undertake such a massive uh, legislative change. And it's important to note that after they decriminalized all possession of drugs, this didn't result in drug use rates increasing and drug deaths fell while the number of people treated for drug addiction in the country rose 20% from 2001 to 2008 and then it stabilized. Also, the HIV infection rate dropped from an all-time high in 2000 of 104.2 new cases per million to 4.2 cases per million in 2015. So here it is, more evidence that this is the right policy to take, to decriminalize the possession of all drugs. And you'll see some crackpots saying that this is radical idea that, oh, you're gonna normalize the use of drugs, that is all bullshit and it's propaganda. So even though Portugal has reported a slight increase in the use of certain drugs, such as weed or LSD, people are still more likely to get help for drug addiction problems if drugs are decriminalized, right? And also we can't ignore the fact that there's been a drastic decrease of drug related deaths in Portugal because of decriminalization or largely because of decriminalization. So the people that are trying to say that this is going to skyrocket the usage of drugs, that's an incredibly misleading argument against the decriminalization. And even if more people are using drugs, there's still other methods that you can use to somehow make sure that they're, they're using them in a safer environment. Safe ejection sites come to mind, for example. And this is not normalizing drugs if you decriminalize drugs because people are not saying that, oh, drugs are so great and everything. No, instead what it's doing is letting people know that, look, you shouldn't be thought of as a criminal because you're not a criminal. You're someone that has a mental health issue or whatever it is. And we want to provide you with the resources that's going to help you put your life back on the right track. And putting you in a steel cage is just not going to do that. It's just going to compound the problem even more. In Canada, we are dealing with a drug addiction crisis of our own, specifically with opioids. And the opioid crisis is actually much worse now than it was a year ago. And this is largely because of travel and border restrictions that are in place because of the pandemic. And the local opioid supply has grown more toxic and dangerous. So now Canada has made significant progress in reducing the rate of overdoses in 2018 to 2019. The number of deaths has increased significantly since the start of this year. And in BC, there were more than 100 illicit drug toxicity deaths per month for six straight months from March to August of 2020. And more than 175 such deaths each month in May, June and July. And this is per data gathered by PHAC. So First Nations people, they account for a disproportionate number of these deaths. They were nearly six times more likely to die from an overdose than other BC residents. Physical distancing initiatives at safe consumption sites designed to prevent the spread of COVID also resulted in more opioid related deaths. There was a report that recently came out showing that people using illegal substances can be at increased risks of poisoning despite their usual amount because of the growing degree of contamination of the drug supply with fentanyl and other really potent opioids. So again, my main point of this video is now it is time for the federal government to decriminalize simple possession of all drugs. We just can't risk seeing all of these people that are hurting be treated like criminals anymore. And not even to mention just the amount of case overload that we already have in the, the criminal justice system. By decriminalizing the possession of drugs, we're going to also reduce the caseload that prosecutors have. These aren't people that should be put in cages. They're people that need to go to mental health centers, for example go to addiction recovery centers. These are the types of measures that we need to take with people that are battling drug addictions because we just can't be seeing more of these Canadians dying. But yeah, that's my thoughts on this. Amidst all the chaos that's happening in the US elections, these are very great new laws that have been passed in Oregon. And I hope that Canada will be inspired by Oregon and decriminalize the possession of drugs. But yeah, that's all I got to say about this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Oh,